Hey everyone, this is Mike Lingle, uh, and I've been doing a bunch of work with 10XU uh, to provide a pitch deck roadmap for entrepreneurs. Um, everyone wants to raise money, they put together pitch decks, but they don't really know how those pitch decks stack up. Uh, and so what we're trying to do is create this roadmap that allows you to see at a glance um, how your pitch deck, uh, where the strengths and weaknesses are, so you can focus on the strengths when you're designing the pitch deck, and then uh, with the areas for improvement, either uh, you've forgotten data that you already have and you can just put it in. Like I was just talking to an entrepreneur and I was like, where is the team slide? And they were like, oh yeah. And you know, that's easy to add. Or you may highlight areas of the business that need some work. Um, so you know, over the next few months, you can go back and, and really redesign the business uh, so that you can get that data or focus on whatever it is that you need to focus on. Um, so basically this is, what you're looking at here is the template for the Pitch Deck Roadmap and you can download this from the website. And basically uh, you just come in here, you make a copy uh, for whatever your company is, we'll call this Test Company. Uh, and then you just go in and fill out the parts in gray. Um, so here I might come in and say this is Test Company. For the stage, uh, if you just double click it, you can choose the stage. So um, we'll say that this is the seed stage. And then these six pieces here, vision, product, execution, growth, technology, and investment. These are the six pillars of 10XU. Uh, and we actually have um, what we call the co-build course uh, where we go through these six different pieces. But these are the things to focus on when you're building a high growth startup. Uh, and so uh, this will highlight the strengths and weaknesses in each of those categories, and then it's color-coded in a friendly color coding system. Uh, so you can see it goes from brown to purple to blue to green as you get stronger and stronger in that category. And so down here, you can see that each section, vision, product, execution, etc., are broken out into subsections. And for each of these, we can just go in and uh, I'll reset everything to zero here we can just go in and give a rating. And we're doing the rating on two, uh, two um, qualities. Is it awesome? Uh, so how does this compare to the thousand other pitch decks that uh, investors are going to look at this year? And then is it proven? So, you know, as an entrepreneur, we make a lot of claims about what we're going to do. Uh, and then we go out into the world and prove that we can do them. So depending on where you are in your journey, uh, you're going from claiming to proving. So we call that show, don't tell. Uh, so you want to move from telling into showing as much as you can as you're building the company. So that's the is it proven. So, so what you're saying may be awesome, but you may have no proof that it's going to work. Uh, and we see this all the time with entrepreneurs. And again, you know, our job as entrepreneurs is to go out into the world and prove that the stuff we're saying is actually true. So if we go through here, uh, you know, we would quickly scan a pitch deck and then just come in and rank everything. Is it awesome? Is it proven? So, and over on the right, you can see a description of the category over here. So you can get a little more information. So vision story relates to the massive transformative purpose. And that's something we're kind of obsessed with the 10XU, uh, which helps us build exponential companies. Exponential is code for high growth. Um, so how good is this vision? Let's say the vision's really great, but it hasn't been proven yet. Um, and so we're in the seed stage, remember, up here. So, you know, we have some proof, but not all the proof. The problem, uh, this, you know, this is a real problem that people have, which means either there are competitors with revenue and we're improving the experience, or we've done some serious customer interviews. Uh, so again, you know, it may be a pretty substantial problem, but maybe we haven't proved it out as much as we would like. And maybe we're a little light in this pitch deck talking about the competition. And this might be an area where, well, there are actually competitors, and, and we see this as a little weak here. We might be able to go back and add some more stuff about the competition pretty easily. Um, and again, with startups, it's probably better to have some competition, um, because then you just need to innovate on the solution uh, rather than educate people that there's even a problem that they need to solve. Uh, so is this solution 10 times better than other solutions? Um, you know, maybe the claim is true, but the data is not in yet. The business model, you know, how does this company make money? A lot of times we see pitch decks where there is no plan to make money. 
the plan is just to build something that people love and try to build the audience, which is great, but that's an expensive path. And even Facebook knew how it was ultimately going to make money. Um, you know, they knew they were going to sell advertising. So maybe the business model isn't as proven out here, um, and that's a real weakness of the pitch deck. And that's something, you know, that we would need to go back to the drawing board and fix. So with the team, does the team have founder market fit, diverse skills, and does one of the founders have at least one exit? You know, team is a pretty big differentiator for, um, for investors. So let's say the team's pretty good and has some pretty good um, experience. Now, this company may have no advisors, so we're going to leave that blank. And then what's the unique advantage? Strong barriers to entry, um, unique selling proposition, unfair advantage. Have they already have a bunch of customers and they've got a network effect? Is their brand really strong? Again, this is a place where we see, uh, typically see companies are light, uh, especially at the early stages. But as they get into motion, they start really understanding their advantage and playing to their strengths. Okay, down here, market size, potential market is large and growing with clear early adopters. So we want to see both the size and the growth. So let's say that is the case. You know, we're tapping into a pretty big market. And then the marketing plan, <clears throat> you know, do we know how to acquire companies at scale? And what that means is, you know, maybe we, uh, we see a lot of pitch decks where it's like, well, if you give us the money, we'll go figure out how to acquire customers. And what actually works better is if you have some data you know, this works, this doesn't work, here's what it costs to acquire a customer, here's what we're going to focus on. Traction would be, you know, you're already in motion and you can prove that you're acquiring customers. You know, we think this is really important to focus on. Um, at 10 we think it's really important to focus on this from the beginning. We see a lot of companies who try to build the product and then go find the customers. That tends not to work as well. So if you can get some early traction, you know, it really helps your company and your product be successful. Again, at 10XU, we're obsessed with exponentiality, so we want to see that you've got the potential for engaged community, staff on demand, leveraging shared resources, big data. So, you know, maybe there is some big potential here. And then with Buzz, you know, are you showing customer testimonials? Do you have recognizable logos as customers? Are you getting picked up in the press? Um, you know, in this case, maybe this company has none of that stuff, or at least not in the pitch deck. And again, this might be a place where, oh yeah, we do have customer testimonials, and they would be easy, easy to add to the pitch deck, and so you uncover a need, and it's pretty easy to fix. Versus if you have nothing, maybe you need to go out and get some customers, again, we always recommend that, uh, and then get some positive testimonials, and that may take a couple months for you to add that to the pitch deck. So it's kind of this, you know, do we have the information lying around, and we can just bring it into the pitch deck, or do we have to go actually get you know, do something in order to get the information and bring it back. On the technology side, is it strong existing technology with a strong development team, preferably in-house? You know, if you're doing something that relies on tech, you do want to bring that in as core uh, to your company eventually. So maybe the technology is strong, is awesome uh, and not quite strong yet, but you're working on it. Uh, investors love to see that other investors are already in. So are there world-class investors with relevant experience already involved? Maybe not. Maybe this is early. Uh, financial projections, is there a clear achievable path from use of funds to at least triple the valuation for the next round? Um, again, this is a place where companies are usually light uh, and they probably need a little work on their financial projections, especially at the early stages. Later stage companies tend to get the hang of the finances. But remember, finance is the language of business, so you do want to start talking the language of business in order to make investors feel comfortable when they put their money. Growth potential. This company has the potential for an IPO or other large exit. Um, you know, again, it's kind of a combination of what does the company do? What's the size of the market? Is the market growing? Is it just a one product company? Or is there room for expansion? So let's say the growth potential seems really good here. Burn rate and runway, you know, does the company have money in the bank? How much is it burning every month? Um, and burning means if they're making money, you subtract the money you're making from the expenses and you're left with the burn rate. So it's the difference between the revenue and the expenses. That's what you're burning every month. And so uh, many companies don't include this in a pitch deck, especially at early stages, but that is important for investors because I want to know if you're gasping for cash or if you're in a strong position. I'm much more comfortable putting money into a strongly positioned company. And then the ask, um, so maybe that isn't in this pitch deck. And then the ask is, you know, what are you doing? Are you trying to raise money? If so, is it a convertible note? Is it equity? 
what are the terms, what's the valuation, a lot of companies fall down on the ask. Um, so, you know, we recommend putting a milestone slide or an ask slide at the end as the last slide of the deck so that you're forced to remember to ask, and that sets up the conversation with investors. So now that we've filled out the sheet here, we can go back to the top, and we can see that, uh, you know, how we're doing in each of the categories. And the idea is not to get 100%. The idea, again, is to uncover our strengths. Um, so we can see here, like, the team is a strength, the market size is a strength, our exponential potential is a strength, our growth potential is a strength. Uh, so those are things we can highlight in the pitch deck. And then there may be a few areas where we can uh, bring our ratings up. Like the marketing plan, we're pretty close on. And maybe we can go get some traction, and that starts to strengthen our story. And maybe we just forgot to put in the competition, so we can, you know, that's pretty easy for us to add. This burn rate and runway is pretty easy for us to add. We can improve our financial projection. So all that can be done in, you know, a few days versus, you know, if we want to go get some buzz, we got to go get some customers and get the testimonials and build the case studies. Uh, so again, you know, it's not trying to get 100 in every category. It's just literally a roadmap of what are the strengths that we can talk about? You know, where are the areas for improvement? Can we improve them quickly in a day or two? Or do we need to go do some work to improve them? So that's the pitch deck roadmap. Um, it's meant to be an easy tool for you to use. You can do the rating yourself. Um, you can download this template. Uh, you can kick it over to an advisor and they can do the rating for you or come find us at 10XU and we'll help you uh, develop a roadmap customized for your company. So thanks. Uh, we look forward to seeing uh, the results of your work. Thanks so much.